The views expressed are solely those of the speaker and not necessarily those of Paltalk.com, AVM software, or its advertisers. News Talk is online. News Talk Online is a production of Paltalk.com, the largest multimedia interactive program on the Internet with more than 4 million unique users. On demand on iTunes and YouTube. And now, thanks to our good friends at CRN Digital Talk Radio, distributed to cable systems serving an additional 12 million households. I'm your host, Gary Baumgarten. Well, today I have two items on the immediate agenda. If time permits, I want to talk about how, as I speculated yesterday, evidence is already emerging that Al-Qaeda's dirty, filthy fingers, fingerprints, hands, are all over the killing of uh, former uh, Pakistani uh, Prime Minister Bhutto yesterday. Uh, but before that, I want to talk about how what's going on on Palestinian television, in my estimation, is an indication that the so-called peace process that was launched once again in Annapolis, you know, every president of the United States is, uh, wants to leave office with the Nobel Peace Prize for having created a peace in the Middle East, and the solution is a two-state solution that everybody presumes that everyone there really wants. And, you know, to me, I've come to the conclusion, and it was a sad, sad journey that I took, frankly. And I wish I was more optimistic about this, because I was one of the true believers that we can have a two-state solution with the Jews and the Arabs living next to one another in peace. But it becomes more and more evident to me that the Palestinian leadership is failing its own people by continuing this war with the Israelis. When the Israelis withdraw from the Gaza, the lands that they withdraw from are used as launching pads for missiles. Now, at the very moment that the Palestinian so-called leadership is meeting with the Israelis at a so-called peace table, the same Palestinian infrastructure the people who control the Palestinian television programming put forth this 11 year beautiful little girl 11 year old girl with an angelic voice her name is Sarah Barom B A R H O U M this is the same program where they have a Mickey Mouse look alike that comes on and tells the boys and girls to hate the Israelis the same program where uh, young, beautiful, talented Sarah has declared earlier this year that she is prepared for martyrdom. Now this week, Sarah takes to the airwaves, Palestinian television, and sings beautifully. I've heard it. And if I didn't know what the words meant, I would say, isn't this wonderful? Talking about a bloodlust in her singing. We liberate Gaza by force, not by Oslo. Raise your sail for the sailors and let your lighthouse eliminate the sea of blood. These are the words of the song that they take an 11 year old girl and put her out there as a role model for her peers as they indoctrinate the children in a culture of hatred. And these poor children don't stand a chance. And no wonder there's such hatred between the Israelis and the Palestinians. Because no matter what goodwill people do on either side of that fence or wall that divides Israel from the Palestinian territories, they get shot down, sometimes literally shot down, <laughs> sometimes figuratively, because their voice is not the voice that is heard, it is the voice of the extremists. So do not believe, ladies and gentlemen, those people who go before the cameras and the microphones in Annapolis and claim that they are there to seek out a peace with the Israelis because here's the proof in the pudding, they are not. Now, the beautiful thing about this show is, as uh, strong as I feel in my conviction about this, there are many people who disagree with me and their voices are more than welcome. So do not fear my wrath if you take to the microphone and disagree with my point of view, you're more than welcome to do so, okay?
So let's get right to the callers. I'm happy to see that we have a number of people in queue to talk about this despicable use of children to indoctrinate their fellow children in a cycle of hatred towards their neighbors, towards their cousins. If you look at it genetically and if you look at the Bible and believe the Bible, the Jews and the Arabs are cousins. I know I offend Jews and Arabs some when I say that, but it's true. Mike is joining us from Greece where he says things are crazy. Mike, welcome to News Talk Online on paltalk.com. Uh, thanks a lot, Gary. Look, it, Israel's been going through this for over, over 60 years. And if you look at it, it actually comes back it, with, with, like what's going on in Iraq, they do. They are indoctrinating their kids to the point where they think that if they die, they are going to be martyrs. Oh my God! Wake up, people, please. No place on earth, no country on earth, should indoctrinate their children to go out and kill I've read that I've read that song I got a copy of it Gary and I'll tell you it makes me sick it make it totally makes me sick so I'm gonna sit back enjoy the show but I agree with you how can you have peace when you have 11 year old kid singing for war and death and with that I pass the mic back to you well, thank you very much. You know, while you were talking there, Woody, I noticed that Palestine 1981 in our virtual auditorium types that these kids are driven by desperation to strap on suicide bombs. Uh, you know, if I were a Palestinian parent, uh, Palestine uh, 1987, and I in invite you to come to the microphone and challenge me on this, I would be teaching my children to live, not to die for whatever cause I believed in. I don't believe that God put us on earth to kill ourselves. That's ridiculous. That is the most ridiculous assertion that anybody would even suggest that it is okay to take children and put a suicide bomb and strap it on them and send them in to a cafe or onto a bus to blow themselves up and then celebrate their death? Celebrate their death? I'm sorry, that is not what the human spirit is about. That is unnatural. It is going against what nature put into all of our DNA. We were put on earth and we fight to survive as individuals and as a species. That is a scientific fact. And when you indoctrinate a child to put on a suicide bomb, sir or ma'am, uh, you are going against nature. You're going against the natural way things go. You know, when uh, a child, sadly, whether it's from natural causes or man-made causes, dies ahead of his or her parent, the parent grieves the loss of the child more than he grieves the loss of his or her parents. Not that he doesn't miss his parents who have preceded him or her into death, but because it is unnatural. The natural course of events is that a child is supposed to outlive a parent. That's natural. And whether it's because of illness or another reason that a child dies precedes a parent